Well, hello, greetings, internet. We are here for episode 13 of Let's Talk Board Games with me, Mr. Chris. We've got Mr. George. I always get this point fingers wrong. Hey, and we've got. The uh, and we've also got Dave Clark in the other corner. <laughs> a fish. I'm, I'm here. No, I'm here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, we're <clears throat> here for the next kind of 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to be talking about board games. Uh, and in particularly, we're going to be talking about uh, Dave and uh, his company, Sinister Fish Games, and talking about some of the games that they've produced uh, just of recent and some maybe some little snippets of what might be to come. Fingers crossed. We'll see. <laughs> um, but in no the question. meantime... <laughs> yeah, no, no pressure at all there, Dave. So in the meantime, um, uh, just a, a very little quick, uh, a little bit of house kinking. Um, just remember, guys, that everyone from home who is watching or re-watching, uh, you can ask questions and then we'll try and come back to them at a later date if we can't do them in live in the show. Um, we were chatting not too long ago with the team at uh, SDR Studios. And uh, with uh, regard to their Earth Rising board game, uh, they are doing very well. They've already met their 100% backing and are already kicking along to their next stretch goals. Um, so if you want to go online and have a check them out, there's some links on the uh, comments just right now. You can go and check it out and uh, see how they're coming along and, and maybe help them get to the next stretch goal, maybe. But well done, guys. Uh, we're so chuffed that you guys have done so well. Also, something else that's coming up this weekend, uh, for the first time, this is a brand new feature, we have actually got uh, Cy, Simon Healy. Uh, he is going to be doing a live stream for us in, a, in affiliate with um, Strata Miniatures. He will be painting the uh, rather epic Ranger in, in, inclusive miniature. So these are the miniatures that are designed to represent you know, people uh, wheelchair bound uh, in their RPGs and tabletop RPG games. Uh, some very lovely miniatures. And they donated a miniature to us. And uh, Simon will be painting that live on TikTok this Saturday at 11 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time plus one. That's here in the UK, guys, for anyone who follows in all the other lovely countries that watch. So you can check that out as well. That's going to be amazing. Uh, but obviously, in the meantime, I'm going to say, you know, hi, Dave. We're going to crack on with the show. It's great to have you. Why not? It's very nice to be here. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for anyone who isn't familiar, um, you are a Lincoln-based company. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, just outside of Lincoln. Yeah. Hiding away in the, in the corner of a field somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's not. It's it's true. There are yellow bellies that uh, do make board games as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in fact, I'm not. The, I'm not the only one either. You're not the only one. No, and in fact, the, if people didn't know that Lincoln is the geek capital of the North, it was actually on Look North as an article about a year and a half ago, two years ago now, I would say. Uh, but yeah, we are the geek capital of the North, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, is there yeah. a, some sort of badge that we get? I don't know. I think we should. I think we should I mean, have. A we've badge. got a geek retreat now, so yes, we have. We've got a geek <laughs> retreat, and uh, in fact, actually, uh, we've we've done a, a live stream from there just the other day. We actually did a playthrough of Earth Rising, so uh, yeah, it is very cool. So you can check that out as well if you're into geeky things. But in the meantime, we're going to be talking about your games. So um, you just not that long ago uh, released an expansion for a previous game, but before we get into that. Um, how did Sinister Fish come about? Come on. Um, so th this is th Sinister Fish is a kind of a, a result of me, my habit of trying to make a living from things that I like doing, <laughs> um, and 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 being basically unemployable by other people. Um, yeah, I, I kind of yeah, Never I don't get on my mind. <laughs> well, it can be. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so I have been sort of interested in games and geekery kind of my entire life. Like I, I've got a very cool aunt who uh, introduced me to D and D when I was about eight, um, and I used to spend like two weeks every summer at, at their place and sort of various other times in the year. And I was so excited to go and play D and D, and then kind of got a copy for Christmas and was playing it with my little friends at school and stuff. Um, 
and uh, we ended up doing setting up like a LARP club or LRP as it was then um, at school when we were, were like fourteen, and spent many years doing that every weekend in the woods. My, my mate had some woods at the back of his house, so we used to go and <laughs> whack each other with rubber swords uh, <laughs> on, a, on a Sunday. And that, oh that ran God. for many for many years, and it ended up like that. It got crazy. Um, we we were asked to do uh, run some like kind of you know sort of fun adventures for some uh, cub scouts at like the the Lincolnshire Jamboree thing for the, for the cubs. Yeah, and, and we were like the kind of the, the hit of the, the the entire event. You know, is kind of turning up with our rubber monster masks and swords and stuff. And these kids absolutely went mad for it. And then, of course, they all wanted to know uh, where they could come and do it every weekend. And we were absolutely swamped with cubs for about two years after that, like <laughs> like literally 40 kids turning up. So it, it turned into a bit of a kind of kind of like a kindergarten for a bit. Um, but yeah, that, that was <laughs> lots of fun. And um, and so that was that was obviously kind of like a the the rules system for that was kind of like a homebrew thing that we kind of collectively put together ourselves and and mm. you know various versions of rules. So we we had like a two hundred page rule book at one point with hundreds of spells in it and things like this. Crikey! And and then kind of realised later that this was just hugely cumbersome and and for a, like a live game where you have to remember the rules as you're playing it and you can't sit and leaf through a rule book. It was all a bit ridiculous. So. At one point, I I really wanted to kind of distill it down into as few pages as we could, and I think we got like two hundred pages down to about three pages, and I, and I really right. really enjoyed that process. It took a very long time of, of mm. kind of stri- streamlining and getting rid of things, and and I kind of realised that we we were doing game design properly for the first time, and and I I, I very much enjoyed it, and it was it was a sort of a, a really cool thing that I did with my friends. Um, and 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 also on the side, we we were doing role playing games and board games and all this kind of thing. Um, mm. More role playing games, to be honest, um, because we have the time to do it, you know, in a regular group and all that. And then mm. when you get older and you get responsibilities, you can't you can't do the epic campaigns quite as often. Um, no, that so, tends so, to happen, doesn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> board games become much more attractive. That it's you know who. who are I think that's one of the joys, isn't it, of of being able to to, to play, you know do a board game you can literally just take control and 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 roll and and play a game in that set period of time yeah and and it's done and there's no commitment and it doesn't matter if if someone can't show up the next week you know yeah um so you know i saw so i was kind of getting switched back on to to the possibility of board games and and but i i'd kind of missed the the original sort of explosion of modern board games like i think i was aware of Catan, and i think i played it with my friend on there was an xbox version a long time ago on, on the xbox 360 um but Crikey, I, yeah i remember that it yeah, was yeah um but but i, I never kind of really got into it at that time mm. and it, it, it was only uh till later on I'm a, I'm a bit of a conan the barbarian fanatic and some, <laughs> someone posted a link to the the kickstarter campaign for the the conan the, the monolith conan the barbarian game uh and i was like oh my god i've got to have this um and and then things started you know i made started making connections in my mind of like right this kickstarter thing this is like really lowering the bar for entry here in, into publishing board games and i just come off of <laughs> like you know re, retooling this uh, the cumbersome larp system it's like maybe maybe i could have a go at designing a board game you know um and, and that was that really so like probably i don't know a year and a half to two years after that I'd, i i had published my first game as a sort of collaboration with my friends and it was it was hard found it really hard going like designing a game it's a very it was a very simple game that took far too long we, we I, I was kind of second guessing myself I, I, it made me laugh um the uh Vl- vlada kvatil the guy that designed designed code names you you're aware of code names right like, yes yes we, we one, like one names, of the yeah. one of the simplest games you can imagine really you know, it takes yeah, like nice. what a, a minute to explain the rules to code names. And yeah. I remember seeing an interview with Vlada where he said that he he took him an hour to design code names, and then an, another six months of second guessing himself that it couldn't be that simple, and and going and going hit. around and around. And he came back to his exactly original design that was finished in an hour. Um, and <laughs> I'm not comparing myself to him, but that's kind of what happened with the my, the game that I designed that. My original idea for it was the one we ended up going with, 
Mm. Um, and and it and it funded and it, and it did okay, but it, I had spent so long, kind of learning about the industry and networking mm. and figuring out how to do a Kickstarter, that I I had become a little bit obsessed with it, if I'm honest, and neglected my other work that I was supposed to be doing, and I was completely broke by <laughs> by the time the game came out, um, and it kind of covered its costs. But I, you know, I I had lost way more money on that than than I made on it. Okay. Um, okay. So and for I, I anyone who's was... not familiar, which game was that then? Uh, the game's called Great Scott, the game of mad invention. It's just, it's hardly a game to be honest, but it's it's funny. I find it funny. Um, it's out of print. Uh, we might do a reprint. Oh, well, no, I uh, like. I, I'm I'm intrigued because of course it's Great Scott and it's a line from Back to the Future. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like uh, sort of Victorian mad inventors, and you just get like draft cards that are sort of pieces of an invention that just make a silly phrase and then you have to tell people what it does it's it's quite okay. stupid. It's, it, I, I found out subsequently it's but it's basically uh snake oil but with more cards <laughs> but <I didn't> know <laughs> that. There's, a, there's a few similar games out there okay um, never a bad, bad, bad medicine is similar as well i think um so yeah d- did that um and then kind of resigned myself to like okay i'm far too slow a designer to be to be like successful and and, and actually make a living as a, as a designer it's going to take me years to do a, a proper game you know um mm-hmm. and i was broke and needed a job so i got a job in a, a print place i'm kind of i've got a background in graphic design and such such things so i got a job in a, in a print shop you know making yeah. signs and doing photoshoppy illustratory things um, and, and around the, this was around the time that Gloomhaven came out, and I'd I'd scraped my pennies together to get a copy of Gloomhaven off the <laughs> the first time it was on Kickstarter when it was seventy dollars um, with ten dollars shipping. So so what's that at the time? It was probably about about sixty quid, fifty That's sixty quid. quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was absolutely bonkers for what we got. And I think it because I backed the project for a for a pound because i was interested in it uh, but i couldn't afford it and then it was one of the last updates where he'd got the the first production copy through and he posted a photo of this like enormous cupboard full of board game i was like oh my <laughs> it is it is massive it's yeah, ridiculous yeah um so yeah this you know the sort of my 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 fomo overcame my uh my yeah. skintness and i i it, it's the thing. It's a real thing. FOMO is a real thing. But <laughs> also, is. I think uh, Gloomhaven kind of started the the big box game trend because big box games are very popular now. Oh know? yeah, there's there's been an avalanche since that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Like, you, know, you you've got um, big, big box campaign the, what, games. Yeah, what was the one we just played the other day, George? Um, that was the first time, and then you played digitally. Oh, yeah, that's massive. Loads yeah. of pieces and. Nemesis, yeah. Nemesis, great game. Um, and, you know, the, the amount of stuff that's in that. And, you know, mm. it's not a cheap game, but people like these things and they back them. And, mm. you know, that's inspiration enough to tell people that, you know, you can still design and produce big box games and they'd be popular. Mm-hmm. But not not all of them are going to be going to work in, in retail. Mm. That's a whole another kettle of fish. But, yeah, if you can, if you can make a you know, one of those games that's popular, then, yeah, there's great potential. I think Kick Kingdom Death was probably kind of the first of that type, wasn't it? The, like, huge, epic game, very expensive, not available at retail. Mm. Um, yeah. But, um, so, yeah, and, kind of and, and, um, ones, yeah. So with, with the, the Gloomhaven thing, that, that he, um, as it released the... Uh, kind of assets for it on board game geek so like all the icons and fonts and and uh you know templates for the cards and things so that people could make their own content um and and including that were the stickers that came with gloomhaven and i'm like okay so i spent all this money on this game i don't want to mess it up with stickers but at my work where i happened to be working at the time we had a machine that that could do custom cut stickers and we had all this removable vinyl that you can stick down and then pull off and it doesn't leave any residue and stuff I'm like oh, i can make myself a set of stickers for my for gloomhaven using these files um and i, I mentioned it on on facebook to a couple uh, you know i said i'm i'm doing this i'm 
I'll probably have a few spare copies if anybody wants one. I'm not going to be able to sell them, but if you, I'll give you some of my spares. And uh, someone someone messaged me and said, "Dude, you should like ask him, you know, to license it and, and do it as a licensed accessory." And it's like, "Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> that's that <was> so <laughs> obvious." Uh, and and I did, and he said yes, and this was like literally a couple of days the second time, like the second edition of Gloomhaven. Um, so I think the f- first time out on Kickstarter, Gloomhaven did like three hundred thousand dollars, I believe it was. Um, and then the second time, it did four million. Just crazy, and, and, isn't it? And we, I, we, yeah. So I, I kind of got into it just, just as that sort of wave of buzz was rising about Gloomhaven, and he was Isaac was like posting about our stickers in the in the updates on the, Glo- the Gloomhaven two Kickstarter, and every time he did it, we were getting hundreds and hundreds of orders. So like our my workplace where I was working turned into a Gloomhaven sticker factory for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> He's down on, on the on the industrial estate at the end of Monks Road there. Um, oh, really? Oh, that where it was, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and 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 by the time it, it was all done, uh, we were getting too many orders to cope with. So so I said, right, well, I, I I spoke to the manufacturer in China that I'd used for for the for Great Scott, and they said, yeah, we can do this, and and so we started doing them, you know, manufacturing them properly on on mass. Uh, and uh, and and I was able to kind of quit quit the job and and start doing it full time, and uh, but I I kind of knew that I wasn't going to be able to design all. I've got like uh, a list of about twenty games that I kind of came uh, game ideas, you know that oh yeah this would be great, it's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what I what I, I figured what I probably could do then with, with the kind of customer base and, and a little bit of recognition that I had at that point, that I could start going to to actual game designers and saying you know look I would like to help you published this game and that was how I, I bumped into uh, to Hawken designer of villagers and he he after speaking to him, speaking with him on and off for about a year about villagers he, he eventually decided that he, he didn't want to publish it himself and he just wanted to be a designer and I just wanted to be a publisher so we kind of joined forces and and that was that so that yeah. was a very long-winded story <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but that's really interesting. It's nice to know, actually, because you no, know, not everyone wants to, uh, you know, do all the elements themselves, uh, yeah. and they want publishers or they want to just to design, uh, and you know, they get that recognition for the design, they get their their percentage, and then they they they, they move on, and they're happy to, to keep yeah. doing that. And then you got the publishers like yourself that want to do that, want to, to do that because that's the bit the kick you get from it as well. Everyone mm-hmm. kind of gets their little kind of. A little bit of satisfaction from producing that project. Yeah, absolutely. Like everything I, I've ever done, really, that I've enjoyed is is about making things. Like I've just always loved making things, and that's so. Yeah, like literally, all my sort of different career paths that I've that I've taken, mm. the ones that I've the ones that I've enjoyed have been have been making things, whatever they are. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so so uh, of course you, you you've talked about Great Scott, but of course the the one that we know we we really you know wanted to kind of chat to you about is of course uh, Villagers and Streets because Streets yep. has been the latest game uh, you guys have produced uh, as along yep. with the expansion for Villagers. Um, how, what was the inspiration for Villagers? How, you know, you mentioned obviously this this you know working relationship with your designer, but but how did this come you know obviously come about? And, so we we should. To be fair, we should get the designer on. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, his, maybe we his... can do that another time. Oh yeah, by all means, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that'd be amazing. Um, his his inspiration for villagers was, um, and and he can correct me at a later date if I'm wrong. But um, you know the in uh, you've played Agricola. No, no, I've not. Okay. So Agricola is is more or less my favourite game. Like you know, it's hard to pin down an absolute favourite game. It's one of my favourite games. It's one of his favourite games, um, and it's it's kind of like a um, you know a sixteenth century German farming simulator. You know, one of those, and okay. uh, it has these little um, oh, I can't remember what they're called in Agricola. Actually, they they're not visitors. But anyway, there's these little little pe- car- uh, cards with with people on them, professions. I think they are in, in the curriculum, um, and there's there's so many of them. There's they 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 
keep releasing more and more of them. So that there's hundreds at this point. And and at the start of each game, you like you deal out a number of these little profession cards, and they the, the get the Agricola is always the same. Um, it, it kind of it's a, it's a worker placement game where everything is predictable um, mm. except for these villager cards and, and also some some like equipment cards um, but they, they make all the difference so so Hockham wanted to do a, a, a game that was just those cards and, and none of the other stuff kind of thing so yeah <laughs> and and he, he's, he's really into the idea of um, uh, just people with odd professions with old-fashioned names <laughs> people kept telling us when, when we were showing off cards from villagers we, we got no end of messages saying oh there's no such thing as a hayer or <laughs> <laughs> you look through that. That's not real. <laughs> well, a Google and simple Google search will will show you otherwise. Good sir. <laughs> One of the um, joyful things for me when I first got Villagers, um, so I backed it and I received it, and I was super excited. You know, loved the art, loved yeah, the idea you. of it. Um, I'd played a, um, Agricola. I, I can't talk Agricola. Um, <laughs> and although it is a, a very nice game that plays nicely to my taste, I thought the rule book was awful. I had to get someone else to walk me through it. <laughs> I was just <laughs> Agricola is stressful as well, really. Yeah, stressful. it is. It's quite um, quite heavy. Um, yeah. And so yeah. I, I was kind of like, yeah, I, you know, I can see the theme there, and I was like, you know, it looks it looks nice and approachable and simple. And I got these cards, and I was looking through them, and I was like, a winter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like. Yeah, it was those sort of weird professions that are just quite yeah. I don't know, charming. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's just, with the art, it with kind the of artwork. feels, it's not like, it's not silly, but it just kind of, you know, it kind of, you know, oh, what's a Vinter? I'll go and look it up. What's a Haya? Haya's not real. Oh, <laughs> Haya's are real. You know, you <laughs> learn something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So obviously you've had the uh, most latest successful Kickstarter for the expansion for, for villagers with shifting seasons. Yep. And uh, I'm eagerly awaiting streets as well. Say. Yeah, me too. Um, mm. they're, they're in the, the the ones for the UK are in the country, and they're Yay! in a, they're in a warehouse somewhere due to be loaded onto a lorry, which is coming up to uh, to sunny Lincolnshire hopefully next week. I think. Yeah. Where they will be. Stashed into a, a barn in a secret location before in Lincolnshire, <laughs> <laughs> but in Lincolnshire, yeah. In Lincolnshire, right, that's it. I, you know. I, I need to start raiding all the barns in Lincolnshire, <laughs> right, but, but but no, I, we, I do not condone this for course of action, George. Not at all, <laughs> not at all. No raiding of uh, uh, those, yeah. We got Suey online, uh, she's saying she can't wait to get it as well, which is always nice. Um, cool. because say, is, it, is it technically theft if it's my copy anyway? <laughs> right, there we go. How would you know? Yeah. This is Gregor. Why is your yes. Why is your name in brackets? I've only just hi, thought. Gregor. Well, th yeah, that was very awkward because Dave was like, "Oh, hi, Gregor," uh, okay. and I was like, hi, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> "Sorry." I think he felt bad for it, but it's really it's fine. fine okay. It's fine. But it's fine because you've come in and and your face I is being. Gregor might be but... like a hamster or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought Becca might be like a cat. Or... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me brilliant i love it I you can't, you can't script these things <laughs> that is here yeah yeah is the, the faithful pussycat yeah brilliant i love it and my, my minds are all asleep, either asleep or a comatose uh sleeping with you know, the missus upstairs in the bedroom probably <laughs> <laughs> my cats are lazy yeah so, yeah mine's. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. But the occasional little, you know, little little parcel left to me in the living room because they feel like I need, you know, mice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just lazy and cute until they do a murder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when it, I, I got a bunny the other week. I was not impressed. <laughs> oh there we go. We've corrected it for you, Becca. <laughs> there you go. There Thanks. we go, Becca and Gregor. <laughs> in the order that we're sitting in as well. That's good. Yes, that's helpful. Oh. Yes. <laughs> However, you do look like you've got a great fish, big fish head. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, if I if I do this, then oh. That's a talking fish. <laughs> there you go. My wife's watching, and she says the baby dog and cat are with her. Yes. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> Sounds great. about right. Yeah. So, um, but no, 
um, so streets. So, you, so it's here. It's in the UK. It's, it, when's fulfillment? Uh, when do people should start to expect to hopefully get their copies? Um, so I don't know exactly when it's going to end up here, but um, wh when it does, I'm, I'm kind of expecting next week. I really hope it's next week. Um, and then we're going to start sending them out as soon as we can, um, and they'll go first class, and we should rip through them pretty quick. Uh, Fantastic. So I'm hoping, so certainly by the end of September, and hopefully way before. How many, how many copies do you have to ship? Um, UK ones, I think there's like, uh, off the top of my head, like two, between two and 3,000, I think. Yikes. Um, which will be, it should be nice and easy though, because we get them packed into um, like shipping cartons at the factory. So they, all we have to do when they come to us is put a sticker on them and, and chuck, them in a mail, chuck them in a mailbag. So <laughs> fingers crossed, it won't take us very long. When, when we did Villagers, um, we had, we you know, I thought we were going to maybe do 2,000 if we were lucky, but we ended up doing 16,000. And yeah. I'd, I, um, we priced the shipping based on us doing it with a, with a very good deal from Royal Mail, uh, like literally half the price of what it was going to cost us to do it elsewhere. You know, like someone like Games Quest or Spiral Galaxy, however, you know that you you can get your games shipped straight to these fulfillment companies and they they do it all for you. You know, you yeah. you would you would just send them a spreadsheet of all your backers' information, and they do it for you. Um, but obviously, that costs a bit more than doing it yourself. So. Yeah, I wanted to make the shipping for villagers as, as cheap as possible. So, like, yeah, we can do it ourselves. Mm. Um, we've got a nice big garage at the bottom of the garden. It turned out that garage was not big enough. <laughs> oh, we, wow, had, really? we had two Crikey. full ship, two full shipping, con two forty foot shipping containers, like what forty pallets. Wow. Um, but yeah, so but if, if you were going to do that again, that ourselves, I would have gone broke. Yeah. Well, if you were going to do that again, what would you do different? What if I had to ship them all myself? Yeah. Oh uh, no, there's no way you couldn't make me do it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, guys. You heard like, it here. So. About, I, I mean, be less successful could be. Yeah, be less successful. Okay. Yeah. This is the thing with Kickstarter. It's funny. Um, when I when I learned the, the sort of the ropes of Kickstarter, there's um, you know, Jamie Stegmaier, Stone My Games. Yeah. And he's written a, a very useful book about Kickstarter, and he has a, he has a blog with loads of hundreds, literally hundreds of really good um, articles about Kickstarter and analyzing do's and don'ts and it's it's great really helpful stuff and i kind of learned a lot from him early on as a lot of people did um and, and one of his lessons is um you know be be prepared for a massive success like have a contingency plan for if your project is <laughs> unexpectedly successful and of course everybody ignores that one because you know, you, you, you're not going to be the one in a thousand projects that mm. from a first, basically first time creator that, that you know, ha, has this level of success. So, yeah, that, that almost that almost um, was very bad for us, actually. But we just we just sort of put the graft in on the shipping, took a lot longer mm. than we wanted it to. And that, like our son grew up in a in a barn. <laughs> we, we, we oh, made it. Brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, no, it. we would never do that again. We're we're only ever going to do UK stuff on our own because it's it's simple. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right, that's interesting. Because of yeah. course, um, I, you know, I, I'm going to say thank you online. I know we've told you said thank you to guys multiple times, but uh, again, thank you very much for the very kind donation for our you know our competition, uh, oh, naming welcome. naming the imp. Because now he's named, it's now Ink. It's fantastic. He's fantastic. We all love him. We all love the redesign. Thanks to uh, our friends over uh, uh, from Sto uh, from Midnight Pig. Ironically, he, the designer of Midnight Pig, did our new logo. So uh, we're very thankful to him. Um, that actually reminds me, we need to uh, we we need to have a catch up with him at some point because we've not spoken to him for ages. So uh, do reach out, mate, Harry. Come come say hi. <laughs> It'd be nice to catch up and see how you're experiencing your fulfilment <laughs> and, and how it went for him. Because um, one of the things that we hear quite often when we've spoken to a designers uh, is is you know the fulfilment fun that yeah, they have because you get the excitement of the game. You like know, like you said, not being prepared for the popularity, and then you have the fallout which is fulfillment because that's basically yeah. it can be a logistical nightmare yeah and i and I, and I don't blame some companies going to amazon for their for their drop shipping you know, facilities you know i've heard pros and cons uh for amazon drop ship so oh yeah if you, if you don't if you don't know what you're doing and you're not you're not careful like fulfillment can can ruin you absolutely yeah. 
your uh, your yeah. your life will be forever filled with comments from people online saying yeah Where you wouldn't you game? wouldn't be able to exist anywhere in in you know within the sort of board game community if you'd if you failed to to fulfill a game that people have paid for yeah you're done you're yeah done. Oh yeah, you'd be screwed. Yeah. <laughs> Particularly when the board game community is so vocal, um, yeah. and uh, um, yeah, it, it is absolutely vocal. Uh, and uh, yeah, so Ree Saunders from SDR, hi. Uh, yeah, so fulfillment is a beast. <laughs> yeah. Yes, very especially, true. Especially now, like you know, we're, we're all we're all getting excited for for streets coming, but the the um, the container with all the copies the pledges for uh, for backers in in the states is, is still in china and i've no idea when it's leaving china because of all the you know the sort of covid nonsense mm. that's that's affected shipping it's really really bad and the, yeah. Yeah, the, the the cost of everything is just makes me feel sick but <laughs> just getting on with it pay the bill don't think about it but like <laughs> you know, the cost to ship things from china to to wherever they're going is yeah. like five six times more than it was before covid you i'm know, not surprised crazy I'm absolutely crazy yeah um i mean um that kind of leads on to my next question so of course you know uh you know streets is coming and uh, of course we've got uh becca and gregor who are getting it i think george and Sui backed it as well didn't you yeah yeah so well, you're going to be getting a review guys. you will be getting a review from us um uh and um you know but uh is there any kind of elements of it that are particularly unique and different compared to to villages uh that you you know you can kind of you know tell us about what for between villages and streets yeah yeah well they're kind of you know streets isn't a, a direct it's kind of a spiritual sequel to villages that's what we're calling it uh the main similarity is that they come in the same size box <laughs> 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 and, and they've got kind of cute whimsical artwork Oh, okay. Um, uh, and and they're both kind of easy to, easy to learn. I think streets is especially easy to learn. Uh, you know, villages is a fairly simple game, but but it can be a, it looks more daunting than it is. Uh, you can say that about a lot of games, can't you? you know? mm. but after after you've played like one round of villages, you you know what you're doing. And, and st streets is the same, except streets takes like literally less than five minutes to learn. Um, so it's very very quick to get out of the box and just start playing it um and uh yeah no I, I i i really i really like streets it's a very 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 smooth streamlined game um it has like a, a kind of a a nice sort of dramatic arc to it in that there there are little meeples that come out on onto in into play and that there's more and more of them as the game goes goes on so they're kind of the stakes get higher and higher as you play which is quite nice mm. um yeah, no, I, I I really rate streets. I was I was very pleased when uh, when Hawken showed it to me for the first time. Uh, you know, difficult second album kind of thing. But I, mm. I, I think I think he's really, you know, if 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 I if I had to choose between the two, I, I think I would probably say that streets was the better game. Isn't that a coincidence? Okay. That's the one that's just about to come out. <laughs> well, you know, available. Weird how that happens, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, Gregor. Uh I, I was asking tongue cheek how much it's available for. I thought you might as well get your full promo in now. Yeah, plug yeah. Um, oh, uh, oh, now you put me on the spot. I think it's <laughs> about 20, 29 quid or something for the, the basic version. Yeah, something like that. Actually, that's uh, not I should I should know this. This is like no, if I was on Dragons Den, thing. I'd be they'd be hoofing me down the stairs, wouldn't they? <laughs> well, no, we're not. We're not the dragons. We're not going to be heaving you down in your stairs. It's fine. Uh, but if you guys are interested in checking out, uh, you know, villages and any expansions that you know that uh, Dave's got on their website, you can check out their website, which of course is sinisterfish.com. Um, and if anyone is out there who's watching live at the moment, we have got a few people watching. If you've got any questions for Dave, then obviously do pop them up now. Um, but, Twenty-five uh, quid streets. Yep, twenty-five. There you go. Quid. Twenty-five quid streets. <laughs> <laughs> he added on four pounds for inflation. With, with... <laughs> yeah, that, it's, yeah, it's a wish, service. Wishful thinking. That, that, yeah. No, no, that, that's the four pound is the COVID charge. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I meant to you. Twenty-nine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, first uh, obvious uh, question. Uh, go on, Becca. I was just, I was just questioning. Uh, Dave, I was just going to say, like, uh, so after Villagers happened, and obviously you saw the the massive success that you weren't particularly expecting. Mm. Um, so as as a publisher, were you sort of thinking, 
you know, this is great. I wonder what my next project is going to be. Or were you thinking, yeah. God, I hope this guy has more because that was fantastic. Well, both. <laughs> yeah, it was both like, um, you know, I think Hooker and I both, we, we agreed fairly quickly after kickstarter that the, the villagers kickstarter that we would we would try to do something else together and we you know we both really enjoy working with each other and you know we become good friends and everything um so yeah i don't think there was a, it, it was you know quickly decided that there would be a sequel <laughs> um and uh but then uh, you know I, I i was also kind of like okay right this this publishing thing is going to work now and, and and now i really have got kind of you know some some weight behind me that I can I can approach other designers and, and try and sign some of the games, which which I did, um, and I probably <laughs> I probably did too many because um, I still haven't I, we, we signed a few games after Villagers and I haven't released any of them yet. Um, but there's there's two of them that I just fit, I've received all the artwork for now. Literally like Ooh. two days ago, I got the last of the artwork for for one of the new games um, from uh, from Andrew Bosley, the the artist who did um, Everdell. Ooh, and, and, and many others. Um, so he's he's done a really nice job on that. So what? So one day, hopefully, uh, maybe next year, there'll there'll be some stuff that isn't by Hawken. Okay. To say that, yeah, no, me, me and Hawken are, are hopefully going to have a, a, a long uh, career together. No, fantastic. Do do remember to 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 let us know as soon as you're ready to release any juicy gossip. That'd be great. I'd love to have you on the show. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm funny he's about gossip. Turning his duo into a trilogy. <laughs> ah, well, yes, that, I think that was. I don't know if that's. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Not without getting yourself into trouble. <laughs> but I'm on the, the spot. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think. Um, yeah, no, we, I mean, we are we are doing another one. Um, we, we we said that after streets, um, and I I actually played it the third one today um hook and has been working on it for a little while on and off and he has a, a playable version which, which i i played today and um it blew me away i absolutely love it so uh and and it um kind of completes the the trajectory that we've been on with with villages and streets so kind of okay villages in the past streets is in the present and and so it may not maybe no surprise that the new game is in the future uh, okay not, not on not on this earth i i, I like all... science fiction based games so yeah you know. yeah yeah um and it, and it has some similarities to a to a popular science fiction game um, okay yeah I, I really can't say too much more but okay no that's fine we're not going to force it, you and it was great that. and i loved it <laughs> Well, and we're not going to hold you to it. We're not going to force you. We're not going to put you down on the floor and beat you to death <laughs> game information out of you. It's not the kind no, of thing please, we do. Not don't. at all. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, no, I'll just sign up to your mailing list on on your website just to make sure I hear about it first. Go yeah, on. exactly. Sorry. Yes. If you want to know more, yes, do check out yeah. their mailing list. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so it kind of looks like we've been really kind of quiet and, and lazy as, as a publisher, but we're... Um, there's loads of stuff going on. I just I don't like to talk about it until it's like actually happening, mm -hmm. and and kind of yeah. Um, we we had a child which kind of really uh, kicked my ass actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and then no, we've, had we've had COVID and stuff, so you know we've kind of been look, looking after the the boy on our own, you know, yeah, lockdown and all that. So it's that's that's really kind of affected things. Um, but uh, I've just had to, um, like we've got my our first. A uh, full-time employee that isn't me just started yesterday, um, so hopefully we're going to cut sort of come out, come out swinging and 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 go up into a, a higher gear. Is the plan? Oh. Are the other games? Are they going to be kickstarted as well? Or um, some some of them are and some of them aren't. I don't I don't want to be like an exclusively Kickstarter company because Kickstarters are so much effort. They really are, um, and uh, there, there's lots of kind of cool games that I, I, I want to release um that i essentially just don't have time to do everything on kickstarter you know i think we could comfortably do two or possibly even three games in a year and, and maybe use kickstarter once or one and a half times a year if you know what i mean once every two, okay. nine months or something like that so yeah it's the, it's, so it's going to be a mix um but but it will be kind of like probably smaller lighter games that we'll, we'll do without kickstarter things where it, you know it would it would be 
kind of like it would feel like forcing it if we were trying to add stretch goals to games that were sort of a nice compact game that was kind of done and mm, finished and yeah. doesn't need yeah. any extra content, you know. I oh, think and Anna. Well, like coming thick and fast with Kickstarters as people start to question, like, are you actually working on this other project that I've already backed? You know, where, yeah, where funny, yeah, right? I know, I know. There was, I can't remember which game it was. Um, I think it. Actually, I don't even want to name drop it because I don't want to bring any negative attention. Uh, but I do remember who it was now. Um, <laughs> and there was a whole thing where they had they had kickstarted a game successfully, and then they had brought out another one, and there were many many issues with the previous one. Mm-hmm. And backers were getting angry. Um, it, it was a whole negative uh, experience for them, and I actually think it's caused some very long term damage through really not much fault of their own because you know they're yeah. a publisher and they're wanting to get games out. Um, so I think there's definitely a danger to having too many Kickstarters going on yeah, uh, for yeah. your public I, image as well as just your time. And yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, we, we've we've kind of got you know we 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 have overlapped a little bit with with streets and um, and shifting seasons. I'm not like entirely comfortable with it, but but I know that you know financially we're okay, and you know we, we're not using money from shifting seasons to help fulfil streets. Everything's kind of separate, and yeah, yeah. yeah. But I I, I don't. I, I from from a backer's point of view, that's not not ideal. Mm. Yeah, I mean, at least with with streets and shifting seasons, you know, you can tell that these you know these games are linked. Um, even though shifting seasons is for villagers and streets is a separate beast, like it's all kind of part of the same big vision, if you will. Like yeah, in slow night, you know, and, um, you know, it, it wouldn't be. Yeah, it's not a spoiler to say that they're kind of street streets and villages are in are in the same universe, as it were. You know, <laughs> yeah, there are, exactly. There's, there's, some, there's some villages Easter eggs in in streets. I would I would really love to see sort of a, a sort of um, Kickstarter or something for like a book of villagers lore. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah, we do like a D and D source book for villagers. <laughs> we, we play we play villagers. That would be yeah. fantastic. Like if you could if you could uh, do that, that would be great. <laughs> I, I did I did pitch the idea of uh, like a villagers art book, um, but we 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 ended up not doing it. But because yeah. we were just trying to keep the campaign really simple and not do mm. loads of mm. add-ons and stuff. But um, yeah, I've got some like. You mentioned I'm now, I'm now vi- envisaging this sort of big box version of the whole trilogy once it's the full timeline as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe borrowing bits from each of them and having this <laughs> yeah. massive conglomerate. <laughs> well, well, you, you the, mentioned. The, sorry, go on. No, no, go on. I was just going to say. You uh, I was just going to give you. A, I was just. I was going to give you. Mention the, the the new game, which which is actually nameless. We haven't settled on a name for it. Yeah. Um, but but there are. It is a completely different game to the other two, but there are still kind of uh, echoes from both both the other games. It's really nice. You can say, "Oh, yeah, that's mm. like just little little mechanisms, kind of little bor- nods." Borrowed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, and and the thing is, uh, the artwork I think you know is consistent. Uh, you know, they look visually nice. Uh, they're nice and colourful uh, and, and very almost. I want to say really clean designs. Um, yeah, you know, they, yeah, they look. Very kind they of, look great and when i got nordic look yeah when i got the, the the package through from yourselves for the competition with the, with the copy um uh, i was just thinking wow it's white and it's clean it's pristine it's like something apple would produce <laughs> if apple were to produce <laughs> yeah, a board well, game you know it to, would look honest, like that yeah um and th- that was what immediately attracted me too when i saw it you know the first thing i saw of villagers was, was the artwork they he, he'd mm. been posting i said oh, this looks good um and you know luckily the game is good as well but but yeah, yeah I, I and i think that's what was kind of probably the primary thing of reason of why it was so successful that i guess it just must have dropped at a time when there hadn't been anything that looked quite like that for a long time and it it was just stood out for some reason and and, and really appealed to people i think that's what it was yeah, because you know like all these people backing it they hadn't played it they didn't know what the game was like so they they must have been going on like largely what it looked like uh yeah, I think it looks great. So, this is the thing, you know. You you mentioned that, but of course, the, sometimes you know they've got to look great to to kind of draw people in. But then the yeah, promise sure. of the you know of the gameplay is just as important because if you've oh, got yeah. a visually amazing looking game and it's crap, 
Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter how good it looks. You're not yeah. going to play it again. And yeah. I am Le- not Leonardo get on da Vinci's back. Snakes and Ladders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great yeah. artwork. The games and awful. I am <laughs> not going to mention something you know that I actually spoke to the designers at at the Expo on live on stream again. Um, but you know, it's crucial. You know, mm. you've got to make sure your mechanics work, and uh, you know, you've got to be happy with everything before you do do, do you do release anything. So, yes. Yeah. If you had any kind of tips uh, for anyone, you know, doing Kickstarters out there who has the inspiration and think they can make a game, uh, what would your be, you know, your top tip to them? Um, oh, hard, hard to pick one. I mean, one of my favourite ones is it's a Jamie Stegmaier one. Is um, you you don't have to launch tomorrow. Um, like don't don't set a deadline for a game, especially not your first game. Like let the let the game be be finished. You know um and and also you know if you if you're self-publishing you you can't just launch into a void you you have to have your um marketing in place and and let people know the game is there and get as many people to actually play the game as you can before you before you launch it you know try and generate some buzz however you can mm. um that said that said if you're i i, I still believe that a, that a great game it has to be a great game and it has to be a great looking game you could launch it on Kickstarter without telling anyone, and it would still fund and do well. If if, if the game is well presented, like everything's got to be tip top. On you know, you're not going to mm. knock something up in a couple of days, put it on Kickstarter, and expect to do well. But yeah, but if, you really work, if, if you put the work in it and, and make a great game, it, it will sell itself. I I really believe that because mm. Kickstarter is such a brilliant marketing tool on its own. You know, like it, even some of the biggest projects but by, by big publishers there's still like half of the people that back those games are coming through kickstarter they're not coming through any other kind of external marketing list but you know it, it's a kickstarter is a hobby for a lot of people and, and they they will browse and you know kind of every tuesday traditionally board games will a lot of board games launch on a tuesday so that there are people on a tuesday waiting for things to launch mm. and, and, and if, it, if things that look appealing even if they've never heard of them they'll, they'll back you know Mm. And the That's thing is, like I, no. But you, the thing is, so I'm different with Kickstarter than uh, than some of the other guys. I can't speak for everyone, uh, but I personally uh, don't back a massive amount of games to fulfillment. As in, you know, I back a game because I want a copy of it. I actually back a game because I believe in the project and I'd like to see it go to completion rather than necessarily being able to afford to back every, you know, back every game to, you know, to get a physical copy. Because let's face it, we all love board games, or we wouldn't be here on the show talking about them. <laughs> We've all got copious amounts of games on our shelves. Um, and, um, you know, it's been having that belief in that project. And I've, and I've taken to actually just backing, you know, with a bit of, you know, here, you know, here's a fiver. You know, it's not a lot to me, but to a, to a games designer and a publisher to produce and back their game, you know, it's something. Um, and I, I'd rather do that for 10 projects that I'm, you know, really inspired by and I love the look of because they look amazing and maybe back one to four because I just, I can't say no because it looks stunning and I actually want a physical copy. Um, and that's how I kind of work. I've got friends, and I'm not naming anyone, who will back anything and everything to like the max level uh, and get everything because they've got the ooh shiny syndrome and they've got to have it because it's FOMO. So, you know, yeah. Uh, and it, and it does happen. We've all done it. We've we've all backed games to to extend US levels, and then we've regretted yeah. it <laughs> yeah. because they've got too many stretch goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah, there's been a couple of games that I've backed that I've kind of got halfway through the game. Like, I don't want this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's the that's the the the, the thing with the, them as well. And I'd, I'd be interested in your opinion. What's you? How do you? What do you feel about stretch goals? Do you think that you know they're necessary? Um, what do you think to them? Um, uh, mostly, stretch goals are, are a marketing tool um, to give you something to post about on social media and to keep sort of engaging with the backers, right? Mm. Um, and, and it's all about massaging uh, sort of algorithms and, and making your project appear on the top of lists and stuff. Uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's uh, but. Um, 
you know, I, th- I think it's important that if you are going to do stretch goals, you make them worth having. Um, mm, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, I would, I, I prefer to, and I, and I think we've mostly done this is, is make sure stretch goals are actual playable content and not just novelty stuff. Mm. Um, uh, my my pet peeve is um, linen finish as a stretch goal. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to mention linen. Finish. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, on every project. Every project. Yeah. yeah. Just or, make uh, it the, finish if you really the, want the, the, the new linen finish is um, spot varnish on the box. <laughs> so it really, really enhances <laughs> yeah. the gameplay. Because, oh look! If you if you if you angle the box like that, it shines a bit. Um, so, you know, the, the, uh, it, the, they're, they're another thing to post about. Um, but at least, cer- certainly, if you if you're printing in China, uh, adding those things costs li- literally pennies. Like, mm. you know, adding linen finished cards to a project might add a hundred dollars to the entire cost of the print run. So, mm. Sorry to break that to people, but yeah. <laughs> that's it the cat is out of the box out of the bag he's, he's told everyone um, just so exactly what you, let what me it... ask you <laughs> let, me, let me ask you then so uh, as a person who sort of browses kickstarter and, and sometimes backs things what, what do you think of games that don't have any stretch goals at all because you see them and, and you know they say like we, we think this game is finished and it's done we're not doing any stretch goals to make it easy on ourselves and to make sure that we can produce the game quickly and and, and all this kind of thing Whatever excuse they want to use, I, just I prefer it because you prefer it, them without. Yeah, because they, you know, they've got the, you know, they're, they're leaving the product. They don't believe they, they need the stretch goals, um, and um, it, it. Not that I am completely and utterly saying no to them, because there are, you know, there are some instances where you might want the deck protectors to go with the game to protect your cards, but not everyone wants them. Um, but there is there's a time and a place for them and mm-hmm. if you're if you're doing your first game um and you don't necessarily want to give everyone like all the expansions and you're just starting off with the base game and you're happy with it and, and that's all it is then great you know and i'll you know I, i'll back it tomorrow mm-hmm. uh if it's something that i feel passionate and inspired by and i'm excited about because that's the important thing you know the I'm game's sure. got to inspire excitement and then people go i want to play that game Mm-hmm. And I, I think, don't think I've ever backed a game because of a stretch goal. I've no. never gone right. Oh, I wasn't going to back that game, but now it's got yeah. wooden pieces instead of plastic ones or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I when I back a game, which admittedly I haven't done for a little while now, um, you know, I am not going to back that game if my enjoyment of that game is going to be dependent on hitting a stretch goal. Mm. You know, if I'm yeah, looking yeah. at a game, I want the project I'm backing. Uh, at the base level to be complete you know mm, i want yeah. it to have all the things that i'm looking forward to from all the marketing material on the kickstarter page yeah. um and you know if we hit 300 thousand backers or whatever and we get wooden pieces great and i prefer wooden pieces but it's not sort of key to my enjoyment uh, no, and exactly. it's not gonna it's not gonna be the thing that pushes me into into backing it yeah. Um, I'm sure I backed something once that deliberately made a marketing point of saying they didn't have stretch goals, and I can't mm. remember what it was. Yeah, but I thought that was quite interesting them. as an approach because mm. I know some people feel very strongly about stretch goals um, in a similar way to sort of if you take like you know the Sims on PC and they say mm. you know we've got an expansion pack and you're like why couldn't this content be in the base mm. Um, mm. and people can get very touchy about it sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I feel like it's a similar kind of thing. Uh, and I, but I also think there's sort of a broad understanding that people know that it's there to sort of, you know, generate more backers and more excitement and more yeah. you know, traffic. Traffic. Yeah and, I, yeah. and I get it. But sometimes some of, the, some of those things can really put a dampener on it uh, because, you know, there, there'll be there was a Marvel game not too long ago. I'm not going to mention, you know, who it's by or, or anything. I think people will probably, probably guess. Um, but all the stretch goals were for all like extra heroes and extra characters. And I just think to myself, why aren't these in the base game? You mm. know, should this be mm. a complete game? But no, it, it wasn't. And and it really put me off. And I was like, I've got to spend a lot of money to get some of the decent characters. And I'm getting characters I've not heard of in this Marvel game. <laughs> you know, go figure. So, yeah, there's a time and a place for them. Um, and uh, sometimes I think it's a blatant money grab marketing scheme. And like you say, so, yeah. Ran over. <laughs> to me, it depends a lot on the publisher as well. The, the, there are some publishers that where it's the actually, 
I need the stretch goal to, hit, to be hit. So I'm actually going to have enough capital to make that worthwhile for me. Mm. And I don't yeah. mind them in those cases. Yeah, I think it, it the, depends on the stretch goal, but add, adding an adding but when one you start seeing the, to a game is the big companies that clearly could that didn't even need to go on Kickstarter and are just using it as their marketing beast. Yeah. It's, it just feels like an insult that you're you're locking game content behind this imaginary stretch goal. Yes, exactly. It's like a vault. You've got to get to that yeah. stretch goal to unlock that content. Yeah, totally agree. It's kind of like microtransactions yeah, also... in digital games at the moment. <laughs> and that whole yeah. trend is, is... It's just like, go away. <laughs> as a backer as well, it's totally out of your control. Like, if there's a stretch goal, you know, that's sort of three three goal, po goal posts away from where you currently are, and you think, oh, I really, really want that, there's nothing you can do. Like, you can share the campaign with your friends, but you're not going to yeah, generate right. enough <laughs> off the back of that to hit this goal that you as a backer really do you know what, what one of the Something that I've never seen before, um, it was on a, on, a, on a big campaign that finished recently um, where there was a, a group of backers... Um, and I can't remember what they called themselves, but they, they had a, they had a name for themselves. It was this kind of like little little cult that formed among like the backers. Where, <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, where well, it was more cult like actually because <laughs> they they were um, doubling their pledge uh, amount, like not not pledging for any more content, just doubling the amount of money that they were putting in, and that they were kind of daring each other to. To, to add more money to the camp to the campaign because they they were they liked it so much. How crazy mm -hmm. is that? Absolutely that crazy. crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's not so it's not that, a charity like they're, they're paying for a product. Was that just out of love for the yeah, product? it's just they they loved it so much, so fanatical about this game that they've never played that they they're like literally doubling their pledges, and it's not like a super cheap game either. Mm -hmm. I find okay. it so difficult to get sort of fanatical about kickstarter games now because i used to like oh my god this is going to be the best game ever um and then i got burnt a couple of times where you know the game arrived and you know the quality was was fine or or good but i played it and i'm i was like but you know the rule book is pants it's not a fun experience this isn't really the experience that i was uh, so expecting to get based on the you know like the kickstarter um and now i i tend to be very conservative with my backing and go okay well you know i'm gonna back streets for example because i backed villagers and i ended yeah. up really enjoying it if you um, know the designer and the yeah, publisher and, and stuff so i trust that it's going to be a good game mm. but if i'm if i'm backing something that's by a publisher i've not maybe not bought something or a designer that i've not got one of their products already mm. i'm i'm very much like okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna back this and it might be good but i'm expecting it to be bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly you form a relationship with publishers and you get that mm -hmm. you know you get, you get that following because you've produced a good game and and then you've kind of got that standard that you're kind of locked to almost and that's not a bad thing um so i just hope your uh your third your third game is as good as all these other two <laughs> yeah well, no know, pressure I, I think it will be i think it will be yeah. well received i hope so yeah well, look, you know, I, I can't believe we're we're at fifty eight minutes already into the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, where's that started. gone? I know, yeah. I know. We've been, we've been having a great <laughs> chat. It's been really good. Um, uh, there, there was one last thing be, be, before we go. Uh, did any of the guys have any other questions before uh, before I uh, kind of wrap up? No, I don't think so. No, no. not for me. Okay, okay. Well, That's look. We, 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 like I say, we've got two backers on the show right here now, and you haven't got one from me, I'm afraid, uh, because uh, you know I, I played with, with games a lot with George, so uh, we tried not to back the same things uh, well, purely sense. because it's part of our group of friends. And, and the guys down there, you know, uh, a bit out, a bit further away now, which is a shame. Um, uh, so uh, it tends to be if George is backing something, he won't back something I'm backing. Um, so. Um, on your shelf of board games, okay, that's not your products, okay, and you and not one you mentioned earlier. Is there a game that you've got and you've still not got around to playing? It's your shelf of shame. What is your shelf of shame? Uh, the, the game that I'm sort of kind of most wanting to get off the shelf of shame is probably um, the Eclipse 
second edition. I can't oh, wait to play that. George will be George must be <laughs> kicking himself right now. Because <laughs> no, George I'm loves that. Game. You, I, I'm just gonna say if you ever want a game, just let us know. <laughs> yeah. 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 That would be that really game. good fun. So we love that game. So if yeah, cool. if you want to get it off your shelf of shame, you're not far away. Um, you know, well than welcome to have a game with us. Nice. Sounds there good. You go. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, look, it's been lovely chatting with you, Dave. Um, yeah, you too. Uh, uh, I would be very happy to have you back on the show when you're ready to start talking about your new mm-hmm. game. So I do keep to, us yeah. in the loop and let us know. And if you need us to have a give a, a review of it as well, then we'll be more than happy to do that too. Um, By all means. Yeah. So um, we have got quite a few uh, good lineup of uh, live streams coming up uh, very soon over the next few months, guys. So do excuse us for a moment. Um, So uh, in the coming months, of course, we've got uh, next month, we've got Steve D from Tin Star Games. We're going to be talking to him about partners, which is really exciting. We are also on the 4th of November, we're going to be talking with Randy Flynn, talking about Buru from Crafty Games. And then, of course, you'll remember we had we, we played that live when we did our charity uh, live stream. Um, and, of course, on the 2nd of December, we are going to be chatting to J&J Games about the King of the Castle, which is going to be coming to Kickstarter around that time. Um, we've got spaces for January and February uh, next year, guys. We're starting to take bookings for next year for the live shows. So if you are producing a game and you want to kind of come on the show and talk about it, or you just want to come on the show and talk to us about games in general, you are always welcome Drop us a message on the DOALG website, and uh, we will uh, have, in, get, have a chat with yourselves. Um, in the meantime, I want to say thank you again so much for your time today, Dave. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to yourself. It's nice you to too. have you back on stream as well, Becca and Gregor. It's always nice to, to catch up with you guys. We, we, we know you guys have been busy with lots of things, but it's lovely to see your faces on screen. So thank you. Um, always of course. Uh, I'm happy to say thank you to my co-host as well, Mr. George, who's been responsible for the social media and the admin in the background today. He's done a cracking job. Wonderful. And of course, if you guys have got any questions and you're watching on rewatch, because we get a lot of rewatch. And if you have got a question for Dave, pop it in the comments and we'll make sure he gets a tag so we can pop that and give you an answer. All right. So um, one last little reminder that Saturday, of course, we have got, uh, Cy Healy, he is going to be painting live at 11 a.m. GMT time. Um, he's going to be painting that wonderful Strata miniature uh, live on TikTok. So do check that out. We've been able to send him the miniature that we got provided. And uh, let's see that beautiful model being painted. It looks stunning, and I can't wait to see it finished. So uh, check that out as well. Uh, in the meantime, uh, everyone take care. Stay safe. Have a, a great uh, you know, weekend that's coming up and uh, we'll speak to you all very again soon. Take care, stay safe and keep gaming. Cheers. <laughs>